and good at this. I'm getting on a groove on my recording. So for tonight's Life Manifested, we're going to start. I, when I was putting it together, I was like, I could put it in a presentation, but then I don't get to see your lovely faces. And so I did the workbook instead so that it is easier for you to be able to kind of remember what the heck. I already find that with my stuff for in the artist way class is like, I go, I'm like, I don't know which answer to which thing this is in my journal. Whereas like here, you'll know this is for tonight. So I always, you can't go wrong with a good workbook. So hopefully everyone has love that. It. And then you don't have to, again, we can all see each other. I would love to go around because there are, everyone here knows at least one other person here, but there are some people that don't know everyone. So I would love to go around and your name, where you're um, calling in from. And if you chose a word for the year, or if you just kind of in concept, um, your in intention for the year, you can share that. So why don't we start with Wendy? I'm Wendy. I live in um, Canada, Ontario, Canada. I'm up, <laughs> I'm up near Georgian Bay, where Lake Huron, that they shot the balloon or whatever down in the news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Huron feeds into Georgian Bay. So um, Georgian Bay is God's country. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice up here. Um yeah, uh, my word I changed Janessa helped me to make it untethered. Hmm. Excellent. Um, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle. I am from Broomfield, Colorado. And uh, my word, I have to work on my mind and my head and my thoughts, but I, I want to be more joyful. So I think that's a good word to think of as well. So. Excellent. Rebecca. Rebecca from Woodbury, Minnesota, just south of Ontario, oh. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I have gone through quite a few ideas for my word this year. And I chose carpe diem, which is kind of cliched, mm. but for us and our family, it has special meaning this year. And so I'm going with it, even if it is a cliche, it's not for me. It's not a cliche for me. I've never chose this word before. It's all for you. And that there was a, one of my clients, not from this kind of work, from my other type of work. One year she had a word that she had to keep looking up in the diction. Like it was... <laughs> I was one of those where I'm like, if you can't, if it doesn't rattle off your tongue and if you can't easily explain what it is, then we have a problem. And as it relates to carpet, sidebar story of Stephanie, who used to be in the community and she is a librarian and she has the best stories every day. There's a crazy librarian story. And so the other day she was working at the reference desk and a gentleman called and he said, do you have a Swahili dictionary? She's like, I don't, but I can use Google translate. So, or if it's something that you're needing to look up and so forth, we can order it and, and so forth. He's like, okay. So he's like, let me give you the word. It's just a word. Um, and so he starts <laughs> spelling it out. And it was um, Hakuna Matata, you know, like um, no worries from like the Lion King. And she was like, oh, that means no worries. And he was like, <laughs> so impressed that she knew what it was. And it was like, oh my God, I can't believe like, and that's like, that's a phone call. Like she gets the craziest phone calls. There's one guy who calls every week from a, a prison in Florida <laughs> and asking really strange questions. And really strange questions. So when I worked at the music department at Harvard, we would get nuts. People would call in, the reception would an, the receptionist would answer, and they would say, I'm gonna sing you this. Can you tell me what it is? Like that happened <laughs> all the time. <laughs> now there's apps for that. 
<laughs> there are there are apps for that. There's an up down dictionary. There were a lot of clues, but you know, like you're calling, you're talking to a receptionist. <laughs> Can I send you this thing and you tell me what it is? Like, okay, yeah, sure, dude. Oh my gosh, that's funny. All right, <laughs> Melody. So Melody Wagon from Lexington, Massachusetts. Um, my um, word is full speed ahead. Oh. I know that's a not more, more than one word, but that's my, I have a phrase. Excellent. I'm Pam. I am Pam Cox and I'm in Algona, Iowa. So I'm right south of Rebecca. <laughs> so um, just like and, easy chain. <laughs> yeah. My uh, thing is move forward. Excellent. Krista. I'm Krista. I'm in the Panhandle of Florida. And um, my word is alignment. Um, when I did the vision board, I, I did a lot of, there was a lot of stuff on nature in, in my vision board. So there's that. I'm not sure how it's tying in yet. It's all to be revealed. But I just wanted to share that I saw a bald eagle, a beaver, and a woodpecker is sleeping in our little V of the tree outside our dining window. He got all curled up tonight in this tucked in for the night so even know that just that a, was a really thing. cool day so I wanted to share that's like it's, it was like the trifecta yeah nature. that's like there's there <laughs> I think there's some synchronicities in that for sure definitely yes um and last but not least Dahlia hello everyone I'm um from well I'm I have been from for the past 20 years North Andover, um, Massachusetts. So I'm the town over from Janessa. And um, I'm, it's my word, right? The word, yeah. I kind of, I'm feeling the health, but I'm in a very a somewhat broad sense. So health slash values i think it's health and i can find a lot of different sort of ways of thinking about that excellent and um, we will we're help and well-being solidify that more tonight as well and kind of take it a little like one step well actually like four steps deeper so um and i'm janessa i am in andover we only have three people from massachusetts tonight and we have i like that i mean I'm missing the other women from Massachusetts, but I'm just saying we have a lot of variety this evening, which is great. So um, I'm Janessa, I'm in Andover, and my word is transform. So, yeah, um, so let's get started. So tonight's going to be a lot of journaling, a lot of, you know, some quiet time. As always, I am love, love, love when people share, but no one has to share anything at all. So as we go, if things start to bubble up and so forth, I do think that there's so much that we can learn from each other when we like, oh, that's what I was thinking as well. So um, feel free again, as usual, unless there's a barking dog or a crying child in your background, feel free to keep yourself off mute. Um, that way you can just pop in. So, all right. So tonight we're going to kind of go big picture and then get deeper and deeper to the fact that I really want, and this is where I think Melody will agree with me. We always get into these workshops and then we're like, oh, it's time to be done. And I really want you to have an action plan on the other end of this. Like, what are you going to do with this? And who has been, who's been to a manifesting circle before? Like with you? With, yeah. With me. I have. Excellent. So we have some, we have newbies and then we have people that have done this before. So we're going to end kind of with manifesting, but we have to kind of get to that place. And so those who are doing, so Rebecca and Krista are in the art journaling through the artist way course. And we're now getting more into the manifesting on Julia Cameron's, which is mine is based on hers as well, which is this whole concept of what you ask for, you will receive but you have to be open and there's all sorts of different angles. And Rebecca, what you were talking about um, yesterday of like writing our questions at night and answering them in the morning is a lot about what we're going to do. So, and if you read the um, workbook, you got that. Um, okay, so 
I want you to take a few minutes to journal. We talked about our word, you know, this is our word, but what does that mean? Like where, you know, like Dahlia, you, you know, it's around health, but what does that mean? Like, what is it that you're trying as you go into 2023? And I know that, oh my gosh, we're already almost two months in. It's never too late, right? We're not behind. We're not like, so right now, what is your intention for 2023? And what is this journey that you're on? Like, what are you working on? And if you haven't gone on to the next one, we talked about kind of the word of the year, but how does that, what does it mean to you? We could all have the word alignment as an example to Chris's word, and it could all mean something completely different to each of us. So what does kind of when Rebecca, when you said Carpe Diem is really special to our family, like, so what is that? So write all around what that means.
you lost Michelle. I don't know why. I was thinking she would just pop right back on. Maybe a battery died. Her device died. So as you look at all that, you know, it's kind of like, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this and it's going to mean this and I'm going to, you know, it's a full redesign of my whole life and so forth. And not that that all won't happen, but we have to focus our energies on one place. So now with what you've just journaled, what is bubbling up? Like, what is the, where do you want to start? What's the priority? Is it, is it you? Is it your mind, your body, your spirit? Is it your profession? Is it your relationships? What is the priority for your intention for 2023? As you see it right now, this is something that needs to be revisited all year long, but right now, where do you want to start? And then if you are making this a priority and you're able to attain this, what would that allow you to do? Question. So this priority, is it like in the immediate future, like a very specific kind of small piece of this? of my work for the year or it's kind of like if your work for your the year 
is health. What are you going to make a priority? Or it's kind of like, now, where are you going to start? Where are you going to start yeah. at what the impact is going to be? I'm going to start everywhere. I know that's not the answer. So, um. so for mine, just as an example, so my intention for 2023 is to transform. So that is to transform my thoughts. That is also transforming my health. And that is also rebooting the community and kind of I'm leaving behind my legacy client and only going forward doing this work. So there are different competing things there, right? So there's yeah. like my mental health and so forth. So um, then what does the word mean to me? It's like to grow and to bloom and to... Um, turn inside out to plant the seed, to grow, to see a new perspective and so forth. And so where I'm putting my priority is growing my coaching practice. The other things, not that I can't, not that I'm still not going to be working on my mental health and not that I'm still not going to be working on the other things, but what am I going to focus on right now? Because what happens is that we're like, and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to, you know, I need, I'm going to have to do 15 minutes of this and 15 minutes of this and 15 minutes right. of this and 15 minutes of this. And then we do none of it. So it's not to say that you can't do any of the other thing, but right now I need to zone in. And that's kind of like when you started, you're like, it's health, but it's kind of like, it's this and it's that, like, this is just helping you kind of get laser focus in where you need to start. It's not like, you know, I'm going to leave all my friends behind and I'm not going to talk to my husband and my kids can fend for themselves because I'm only working on this. That's, but, you know, um, and then, oh, go ahead, Krista. Oh, do you want to finish? And I'll ask. No, go ahead. Ask. I'm just, it, you know, sometimes it feels, I guess, because alignment, I'm talking about my authentic self, like being, acting you know, do, make taking action that uh, reflects who I want to be inside that, who, who I authentically am. It, there's some vagueness in all that. There's a little spiritual, like I'm trying to find my inner self. And is that okay? Like through this yeah. process? Are we because just that's gonna... where I'm working. It's like, you're doing the inner work. Like yes. I am doing the professional work. You need to do the inner work which feels like Dahlia might be doing the body work. Yeah. It's not, yeah. It's I not wish it was concrete. I wish I was like, I need to lose 20 pounds, <laughs> but that's, and that is the thing. It's like, then once we understand where we need to focus, then we can figure out what the action plan, like what's the root. That's how we're going to come out of this night of like, what does that mean? And where are we going to, what are the marching orders? and okay. putting some kind of concreteness. So this kind of like ethereal little yeah. vagueness is fine. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as you're fine with it. I mean, if it gets to a place where it's like, it, there's no judgment here. And this is yeah. where we're so used to resolutions where it's like, I need to lose weight. I need to stop drinking. I need to stop eating. I need to do all these things. Those are very e not easy, but they are- right. Things that tangible. we can tell they're tangible yeah. and we can be like, tangible. oh, this is what I'm working on. As opposed to like, I'm trying to align my authentic self with my outer self. Yes. People are like, sure, Krista. I'm trying smoking. to love myself. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, mine is transforming my thoughts is 100%. And, right. I, and there is like the amount in my I am um, app, I have liked 300 affirmations and I don't like oh. them all. <laughs> it's like, I got a little badge the other day for liking so many, um, wow. but it is, it is an affirmation, you know, yeah. and that will continue even though this is where my priority is. So if this is your priority, what does this allow you to do yeah. is the second. And then what impact will that have on you mm -hmm. and or your family? Yeah. That one's easier, but yeah, okay.
And then you use those three to fill in your intention statement, which this look, looks very similar to a manifestation, but this is not the manifestation. This is your intention for the year. So it is that since I am making, whatever is your answer for the first, a priority so that I can, what the um, what it allow you to do, um, which will allow me or us to, and then, so you're gonna make it into a statement. And then the last piece of this, once you have the statement, how does it feel? And if it doesn't feel quite right, what might make it, like where do you feel off or where do you feel in alignment to it? So I myself, my first take at it, it was kind of like the answer I should have. And then I had to rewrite it to what it actually means. So there is that. It's okay to write it more than one way and see which thing actually resonates with you. So. All right, now you have your intention for the year, and this might change before the end of the evening, but this right now, this is where you have for your intention. Anyone have like, oh my gosh, this is so it. Oh my gosh, I, I'm still not feeling it. What's our overall concept on, on where we're at? I'm good. You asked earlier what was, or that we should kind of think about what bubbles up for us. And what bubbled up for me was just all of a sudden it seemed really clear. Coming into tonight, this afternoon, I was thinking, I'm not even sure what my word of the year is, but um, it seems very clear. Excellent. I like that. Awesome. <laughs> I have, I have a funny question. Are we still doing this in a journal or on the actual sheet? Well, um, Wendy, you, hashtag you do you. I'm writing right on the sheet as opposed mm -hmm. to my friend. Okay. All right. So the next one, we're going to do values mining. Okay. And um, Wendy and Melody did this on retreat, but I want, this is a little bit different way of doing it. Um. And so I think it's still um, worthwhile because that was then and this is now. So this um, exercise is actually their flashcards. And if you're doing it by yourself, you go through the flashcards and you pull out the ones, the words that resonate with you and so forth. But this makes it much easier. You, so what I want you to do 
without much thinking is to circle any of the words on here that you could answer like parenting for example parenting i i parenting is important to me i'm a parent right but if i were to say i stand for parenting no that's where you can what a value is versus just an attribute that you have okay like i want people to think that you know truth is important to me but i stand for truth is not the world that i work in does that make sense melody you're having uh, looking perplexed oh you're on mute I'm struggling with stand for, as opposed um, to these are things that are maybe just super important to me, like fundamental core values. Is that what you're saying? We're, get, we're trying to get to fundamental core values, but in this out in this exercise, there's 140 words here, and it's easier to be like, oh, well, that's important to me, and that's important to me, but saying I stand for it gives it a little bit it brings it to the top but first you can do a first blush of these are like super important to me and so forth if i were to say to you write down your five top values you're going to say family you're going to say you know um success faith you know like all of health those are all the ones those are the easy ones this gets you to really what your core values are so just Go through, read them quick, and then circle the ones that um, speak to you.
So Janessa, I'm always a little behind. So was there a number of words or just as many words? Just as many. I have 22 myself and I've done this about uh -huh. 17 times. So, um, so we start big and then we're going to, uh, we're going to narrow them down. Okay. So once you get to the end of the list, I'll just wait until everyone's done. You're going to start to see kind of a, a trend. Like there's, so I had said um, somewhere that you could bring colored pencils or markers to, you could either do this one of two ways. You can start to like, my first word is authenticity. So I could say, I'm going to color authenticity blue, and then I'm going to color any others that kind of, I have um, individuality and originality, self-expression. See, those all go together. So you can either color code them or on your next sheet, there's a place, there's um, a spot so you could like, pick one of your words and then lump all the words that are similar to it. And you can start to get categories of words. If that makes sense. Can you hear Sam's music in the background? No, I can't. All right, so I won't yell at him because it was just moments from happening. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to hear it.
And as you go, there might be words that you're like, actually, that's not really anything that I want. So once you have them chunked into kind of categories, you can look at those and figure out which of those words kind of embodies the whole chunk and then get it to, then you'll get it to like five and then we'll go from there. And ultimately, if you can get it down to five, we really want to get it down to three. So there's going to be two, three that speak to you more than the others. And you can kind of do that by which ones had the biggest amount of words in the chunks. At least that was kind of my situation. I had like three strong lists and then everything else was a little like kind of one-offs. That being said, I do this all the time, but my words are always a little bit different, which is interesting too. Anyone get to three? I'm still highlighting. <laughs> do you I need to end at nine. <laughs> I struggled with this at the 
at retreat. Retreat as well. I, I'm seeing. I am seeing a um, a pattern. Now. A pattern. So why do you want us to get down to three? Like, what's the magic of three? What about four or five? But well, I can see Melody that going. Will say, why can we be five? The the name of the program is One Core Value. So they really want oh. you to get to one. And I already have set it to three. But yes, if it's like a four, but it is that idea that's the same thing of like, we can do everything. But if it's like, it really helps hone you in on these are what, this is what I'm all about. Not that I'm not, you know, you know, for me, my three are authenticity, belonging, and freedom. And I also had like harmony, simplicity, like there was that whole piece in this whole like intuitive joy, wonder thing. And not that those aren't all things that I still feel like I'm, I'm about it really boils down to, you know, the more we can hone in, kind of niche it, the more we can, it can be more impactful. But if you have four instead of three, that's okay. Melody, what if you had to have just one? Would you be able to narrow it to one? Yeah, authenticity. Because that is what is most important. Like, I want to be living my life like this is who I am. This is, this is all me, no filters, no. And that's for me in my inside brain and my outside. I feel like I'm much more authentic to the outside than I am to my inside. And that is, you know, um, that's a whole podcast in itself. But yes, that would be, um, that would be my number one. And that's the one that never fails as I go through this is the one that comes up. Yeah, it's, it's funny because um, I, you know, the way my mind works, I'm like, I want to pick the ones that aren't self-serving, but I, I mean, I know what I'm doing. I recognize like that that's, yeah. Like we should be like, very altruistic. Making a difference. Yeah. And that is where, like, that's where if I had said, what are your core, what have, you know, what are your five most important values? You would have picked all of the lofty things that we're supposed to pick and so forth. And that's, but know, the thing is like with authenticity, I, if I, I will make a difference. Exactly. Which is what I was going to say next is like, if like, me, authenticity, belonging, and freedom are completely in alignment with my intention statement, right? And that is of where I'm wanting to go. So for my intention statement, I did it two ways. One that was like more financially oriented that I want to focus on this so that I can be, I can build my practice and build my income so that I can help support our family. That didn't align with me that much because about, money is not one of my values. So then I had rewritten it to, I am making my coaching practice a priority so that I can help that many more women so that we can all work within our genius. And mm. that aligns with my authenticity, belonging and freedom. Cause I want, this is who I am. I want everyone, the community for me is about belonging and having mm. a place to be and so forth. And my, my work is so that all women feel that they are free in their minds in their bodies in their spirit and be able to pursue what they want. So that's what I'm wanting. And as, as we go through the next 30 minutes, there's still going to, that's why you have a workbook. So you can continue to kind of noodle in this because this needs to kind of, you need to simmer in this a little kind of marinate. Um, but that's where we're trying to go. So your instructions, just when I go back to this, one was that we circled all, and then we chunk the ones you chunk that it down. are like similar. You just, you, yeah, you're able to like highlight them or like, I just pick the first word and then I go through and like, which words yeah. are like that one. And then I go to the second word and so forth. And then once you get those chunks, then you're saying like, okay, I, out of authenticity, individuality, originality, self-expression, uniqueness, or vulnerability, what word speaks to me? Like which one of those kind of speaks to me for the whole group and so forth. And you're trying to get it down to three. 
Um, so then it is this idea when you get it to the three, how are you honoring these today? Like, where do they show up? And, or where are you out of alignment with our, you know, it's to say like, I stand for authenticity, but I am always putting on a facade and so forth. And I'm not feeling like I'm in alignment, even though that is really important to me. It's kind of like, you know, humor is so important to me, but I haven't laughed in a month, you know, like, so where is something that is out of alignment with those with those values. It's cool how the this I haven't done this before. It's neat to see it tie in to everything, everything that you've got going. Very yeah. Cool. And that's where you want to see that thread. If it's all of a sudden it was like, oh, I said it, and that's where. When it's not in alignment, one of these two exercises, you did not come to it from an authentic place. It's a should place as opposed to a, I'm feeling this. Like yeah. I should think, I should want these as my values or I should be doing this for my intention. One of them is off. And it could be in a, if you, they're in alignment, but you're still not feeling it. You did both in a should, you know? So very cool. How are you doing, Melody? Uh, it's it's actually it's what's interesting to me partly is I was pulling out what we did at retreat and hey, I got it down to four. I'm at four categories, but I had some of the same things, but the words are in different columns this time. Like oh, some of the like, words, you know, some of the words could be in different places anyhow. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's slightly, it's slightly different. There's a lot of similarities, but it's slightly different. Yeah. And do you think that it's slightly different because you're in a different place than you were in September? I would imagine it has to be. Yeah. Like, um, so. excellent. All right. So we're going to now shift over to kind of creating our vision. So yes, there's a little bit more work here, but as you let get those to those words, then you can finish this piece. Does that make sense? If we did this and I'm on a morning meeting a few weeks ago, I did this on the podcast, but I want you to kind of, all right. So this is, we started with, this is my intention for the year. And this is the part that I want to stay in priority. And now I want you to, now we need to kind of visualize what this looks like, feels like, um, tastes like as the year goes on. If you make this a priority, if you pump up these, these core values and kind of let them shine through the work you do out in the world, in your own body, in your own family, what is possible? Where are you today? Body, mind, and spirit. So when I say body, mind, and spirit, I think health is your body, kind of like literally how you feel physically. Mind is how your mental, like how your thought process, mindsets, limiting beliefs, and so forth. And spirit is your creativity, your faith, your connection to others and so forth. So where are you right now? Just as a point of reference, a little bit there, but really focus on what, if you make your intention, your priority this year, what's possible? Where are you body, mind and spirit on December 31st? Can you, what did you say about spirit? Spirit would be, um, that is your creativity, your faith and connection. It's kind of like your passion, those types of things. Okay, thank you. And then I always say body, mind, spirit, family, profession, because family and profession, are, there is that connection. There is, you know, doing the work that you love 
is I think more spirit than anything, but um
So for this, I really want you to think about what it is. What do you look like? What do you feel like? What is possible? What do you have on December 31st that you don't have now? If you are on this road for your intention, valuing, like, um, valuing your values, but um, honoring your values and living in your best self, like taking true care of yourself what is freaking possible like you are unstoppable at that point so what does unstoppable look for you and just jot down a few ideas on what that looks like that's where you can continue in your morning pages this week of like what does that look like and how would that be and again your connections with other people your uh the work that you might be doing, the, the health, you know, different tests that you'll be able to be able to, medications, you're off. Like what are the, all the things? Put it, everything down that you can think of. And I've been naming our, I've given, you are all going to be completely schizophrenic before this is all over because I keep making you uh, new names. But so now we have, our name for our like authentic self, our false self, our best self. So in this vision, then this is one of the things from the podcast a few weeks ago is to give your best self a name. which I said the other day is for me is love, which is also the name of my um, magical unicorn that I now sleep with every night. <laughs> Wait, what was your name? Love. So my love. my um, best self's name is love. Oh, that's so sweet. So, um, and that's what I named. Lovey is what I named my unicorn, which then Mir goes, but that's my name, which is, I do... I refer to both my children as lovey, but apparently he thought that was reserved. For him, so I'm, okay, I'm I have a question. Question. Certainly. Um, so let's see, what does it feel like? What's possible? Where are you? Okay, all that I get, um, but whenever, and I'll have to talk to you later about this, but maybe you can give me a short answer. Um, what are you doing? That is such a trigger for me because that makes me feel like you're asking like a purpose question. And I don't know what my freaking purpose is, Janessa. No, no. And that's where, and, and for those who are not, that don't see that, like for me, my, my intention is to grow my community and my practice. So on December 31st, I can say, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm spending my time and so forth, because that is what I'm working on. You're working on an internal, your intention for this year is to come into alignment and so forth. And so what are you doing is that you're caring for yourself every day, that you give yourself that opportunity to be creative every day. Like that's what you're doing. It does not mean a profession. Okay. So how are you spending your day right now? Otherwise yeah. I will like get on the crazy train and it will nope. take off without me. Yeah. No, no, no. So okay. that's where each Daily of you battle. is in a different place. And absolutely. So that is, um, it is what is not happening for you right now that you want to have for you then. And what does that look like? So just okay. focus into that piece. I have a whole other course on figuring out what you're supposed to be when you grow. Oh, I plan on messaging <laughs> you about this one. Yes, I might need some one-on-one. Uh, -on -one.
Okay. So now we get, now just a nod, a wave, a yes. Do you start, are you seeing, like Rebecca, you had the clarity on your intention. It was all coming clear. Was that in alignment with your core values? Did that help kind of pump that up or was that seemingly in contrast? Yeah, it turns out they were in alignment. I wouldn't, I didn't expect that to happen when I was looking at that long list of values and all these different things. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a congruence. Absolutely. It's going through. Excellent. And mm -hmm. for each one of you, like had I said, write down your three core values, would you have come up with these words? No. Because we, no. we, we go from such a should place and core values is this values is like, you know, it's a lofty altruistic place. That's like, Oh, I have to like, you know, it's God, my children and you know, my body. And it's like, not that those aren't all important, but that isn't kind of, those are hard to kind of honor on a daily basis. So now we're going to with this vision in mind. So our intention is still kind of wide, right? I want to, you know, become into alignment. I want to, whatever the case is, manifesting, we're going to hone it down a little. It's a little bit more short-term. Let's say in the next three to six months, what do you want to see happen? What do you want and need? And this might be one of those roadblocks between here and where, you know, you're going on December 3rd, 31st. So if you could have anything you want right now or in the near future, what would it be? You can pull this from your vision, like one of these things that you're wanting to have happen in your life. And this kind of follows the same structure as the intention, but this is, and it might be the same, but it, it's somewhat different. So then what is the impact to you if you get it and in all aspects of your life? So when we manifest, we put something that we want out into the universe and then kind of give, we share, we share it with universe source, so on and so forth. And if we just said, I want a hundred dollars, it is self-serving, right? So then I want a hundred dollars so that I can take my children to dinner. Still not there to a wider audience so that they can have this experience that they will remember forever or whatever the case is. So that's why we then, this is what we want and this is the impact it will have to me. But then we widen it to, it's the same idea of like, 
you know, it's for me, but now I am going to be so much happier. And thus my children are going to be, you know, they will benefit from this and so forth. So what is the impact to a wider audience if you were to get what you want to manifest? And similar to the intention, we're going to write this as I want, what was your answer for number one, so that I can answer for number two, which will, and the answer to three. But ultimately, once we have the sentence put together, we're going to rephrase it as I have. You always manifest based on that you already have it. And you can put that on the lines there. Everyone able to pull a sentence together? <laughs> yeah. So the whole thing should be in, I already have this. I already have this. This is already happening. And this is already having an impact on the, the wider audience. Now, once we have our script and we're putting it out into the universe, then we have to do our part. So it's similar to say, like, I want to find a job <laughs> so that I can have money and so my family can serve it. And then we just sit here and we wait for the job to come. That's not how it works. So we have to have a LinkedIn profile. We need to have a resume. We need to call all the people that we know, you know, like, so now think of to make this manifestation come true. What are 10 things that you can do 
right now to start bringing this to fruition? And they can be, make them small, like 10 actionable items that you can do. And it's not all the items that are necessary, just 10 items that you can do to bring this to, to life. Could, could you give me an example? Like if your words authenticity. So what is your manifest? So what is your manifestation script? You want to hear mine? If you're, oh, if you're okay to share yeah. it. It's like so woo woo and I was not expecting it to go this way. So I'm kind of like, what just happened? But I'll share it. Yeah. So I have connection with spirit and I'm taking right action for my mind, body, and spirit and sharing my light and love. Excellent. So now for that to come to life, how can you start honoring that? What does that mean? need to happen? What, what are the daily practices that you need to do? What might be a class that you want to take? What might be research that you want to do? How can you share your love and light? How are ways that you can express this? So just put any of those ideas down okay. and so forth. Then when you have those 10, rank them in order. Decide what you're going to do first, then second, and so forth. We want to do all the things all the time, and we need to start in one place. And then how will you tackle or at least start your step one this week? What do you need to make that happen?
And then I want you to actually put it on your calendar. <laughs> and even better yet, put it on the intentions in the community. So now that you have your manifestation script, I want you to, I mean, you could take this piece of paper, but I usually put on a like index card, the script and set it on my bedside table. Eventually you'll have it memorized and so forth. Say it three times before you go to bed. <clears throat> and then when you do your morning pages in the morning, you start, that's where you start seeing the connection and so forth. How manifesting works <clears throat> outside of the mechanics of it, of having a script, saying it, doing your morning pages. We give up. We're welcoming universe to kind of co, be a co-active participant in bringing this to fruition. And as a result, we have to give up the how, how this is going to happen. Think if it's like, I need $500 so that I can send my daughter to whatever. It's not like a $500 is going to show up. Like all of a sudden you're going to get like, a, you know, strange tax refund or, you know, someone wants to buy your sofa, you know, like randomness happens, right? So then you're like, and you have to be open. This is where in the artist way, where we're like, we have to be open to what these synchronicities are. So now you have to really start paying attention. <clears throat> and then there are going to be breadcrumbs that were given. <clears throat> so that same idea of synchronicities of like, I really want to look for a new position. And all of a sudden your friend calls and like, you know, Mary just quit her job. She, you know, and they're like, oh, maybe that's, that's not what I was thinking, but maybe that is something of opportunity. And so you don't have to take the job, but you should at least pursue the idea of it and so forth, because each one of those leads you to one other thing and that leads you to one other thing. So within the community, if you do a search for manifestation in articles, in articles, there should be an article on how to manifest your dreams in eight steps. It's also on my blog. There's also a podcast. So this whole process is detailed there, but now you have the script and now <clears throat> as it comes to fruition, you can keep changing the script. If it's similar to your intention, if it's not jiving, like it's, it doesn't, it's feeling like it's forced and so forth, play with that in your morning pages and that will start to come and so forth. And as Melody was, saying, Melody usually is manifesting multiple things at one time. You can have more than one thing that you're wanting. To the point of yesterday in Artist Way, there is not like, I have to, I can only want one thing. You can want more than one thing and you can be working on more than one thing and so forth. But just know that you have to be an active participant. There's only so much time in your day and your weeks and so forth to be active participant. All right. For our newest manifestors, this was this a, um, a fun activity, if nothing else? Yeah, I think it was really valuable. I've done some stuff with manifestation before, but this, I like how one thing led to the next thing, which led to the next thing. It was all connected. So yeah, this was Excellent. good. It's really good. Yes. Typically we just kind of go right into the script <clears throat> and then we all share our scripts and then there is power of manifesting together. That's why, you know, the more people want to share what they're manifesting, it gives us an opportunity to help also be a co-active participant in your manifestation. So that's where we, most of our manifesting circles is sharing what we're manifesting and all kind of work to bring that power up and so forth. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I know we went fast and there's, I'm glad we have a workbook. So now you can go back and you can preach it again and kind of do it yeah. clean yeah. as well if you want. I know, I, I know Wendy, she will recopy everything. So that's the way she works. Oh my gosh. You all figured out. 
Dahlia, did you get enough to be able to finish later? Yeah, I'm always, I, yeah, it just takes me that so much time to well, do this, but, I, but I, I have it. As, as an overeater, I'm an overfeeder. So for these workshops, I always have this fear that we're not going to be able, there's not going to be enough. And then I'm always like, okay, let's keep moving. We got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. So the last page is just this old idea on the morning pages. And you can keep track because, you know, we, we like to do our habit trackers. Of, And that's one of the things you can add to your habit tracker is that I manifested. Um, so manifest each night, morning pages each morning. And now we can start hearing about it in the community as things like start to pop up. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And um, if anyone ever has a problem, like coming up with their script or needing tweaks, you can just message me. Again, it's kind of like finding your word. It's easier for me to see it than it is when you're right in it. Groovy? Groovy. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I know that I, I saw some of you like last night, this morning, this, this, morning. this evening. It's like a lot of togetherness this week. Um, I will see those of you on Sunday. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week. Okay. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks, Janessa. Thanks, everyone. Yes, Bye. Bye-bye. Thank